This recording is to tell the amazing story of Yasuke, the forgotten African samurai. Now, Yasuke first appears in history in 1579 as an attendant of the Jesuit missionary Alessandro Valigiano, who went to Japan to visit the missions that had already been set up there. Yasuke was reported to be around 24 or 25 years of age when he first arrived in Japan. Some scholars claim that he was from Mozambique and others claim he was from Ethiopia. But either way, his arrival in Japan caused quite a stir. This was feudal Japan and the arrival of this tall and I'm going to say handsome, dark skinned, African blew people's minds. People came from miles around to visit the church which the Jesuits had constructed in Kyoto just to see Yasuke and he became something of a celebrity. This celebrity status soon drew the attention of Oda Nobunaga, a medieval Japanese warlord who requested an audience with him. Nobunaga apparently was skeptical that Yasuke's dark skin was genuine and had him remove his shirt and rub his skin to show that it wasn't ink. He was also impressed by Yasuke's height. He's recorded to have been over six foot tall in an era where most Japanese men were closer to five foot tall. Nobunaga praised Yasuke's strength and stature, describing his might as that of ten men, and brought him on as his feudal bodyguard. Yasuke's original name is unknown, but Nobunaga called him Yasuke, which is most likely a Japanization of his birth name or Christian name. As the two became accustomed with each other, Nobunaga grew fond of Yasuke and treated him like family, as he earned his worth on the battlefield and on patrol at Azuku Castle. In less than a year, Yasuke went from being a lowly page to joining the upper echelons of Japan's warrior class and became a samurai. Before long, Yasuke was speaking Japanese fluently and riding alongside Nobunaga in battle, an honor reserved only for people Nobunaga must have respected and trusted. As one of Nobunaga's right-hand men, Yasuke gained a handful of enviable privileges during his tenure, including his own private residence, a ceremonial katana sword, and the pleasure of dining with Nobunaga, which few samurai were privy to at the time. Unfortunately, however, Yasuke's career as a samurai would not last long. In 1582, Nobunaga's general, Mitsude, started a coup to overthrow him. He stormed the temple where Nobunaga was staying, and Nobunaga, convinced of his eminent defeat at the hands of his treacherous general, committed ritual suicide. After Nobunaga's death, Yasuke fled back to Azuchi Castle and entered the service of his son, Odo Nobut Ada. His son, however, also committed suicide after suffering defeat at the hands of the treacherous general. And after a long battle, Yasuke eventually surrendered. Yasuke apparently offered his sword to this new warlord, following the Western custom, but it was rejected. Now, there's two versions of kind of what happened at the end here. Um, in one version, Yasuke was called a barbarian because he also had you know because he refused to commit ritual suicide and in the other version of the story is that this new warlord sent him back to the church because he didn't want to have any problems with the jesuits um you know believing at the time he needed all the friends he could get and he didn't really want to potentially go to war with a western power in feudal japan but either way Yasuke wasn't killed and nothing is really recorded of what happened to Yasuke after this time but I personally like to believe that he lived out the rest of his days in peace. Now there's one interesting saying um, that comes from round about this time and that is 
So there's an ancient Japanese proverb which says, for a samurai to be brave, he must have a bit of black blood. And there's a little part of me that likes to believe that this was in reference to Yasuke, but who really knows? So if you enjoyed this um, and you want to learn more black history, you can check out my IG page, which is blackhistorybuff.com. There there are going to be many more Instagram stories going up on IGTV for you to check out for those who like some visuals to go along with the audio that I'm presenting. And if you're after teaching resources, you can head over to Patreon. The link is on my IG page at blackhistorybuff777. And if you like music, you can also find me on Spotify um, with the Classic Black playlist. Uh, The link to that is also on my IG page, which is blackhistorybuff777. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this recording. Um, Please feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Ask any questions. All feedback is welcome. Share with your friends. Hit the notification button. And please uh, just stay tuned. There's going to be many more episodes to come. And this has just been a wonderful experience of me just sharing our history and getting it out there to the world so thank you all for joining me on my learning journey Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege and I appreciate you all so much thank you